Timothy Roy. Detective Claude Richards. Detective Joseph Vigiano. Police Officer Vincent Danz. Uh, briefly, what you see behind me is large I-beams that were selected in 2001 by members of the California State Fair Board. We went to New York and saw the 12-story pile of steel rubble. Understand there was almost no concrete, almost no glass, simply because of the heat of the fire. When you look at the beams, you'll notice there's almost no concrete left. That's how intense the jet fuel burned. To my left, your right, is a floating sphere made out of solid granite and floats on pressurized water. The name of everyone who perished on September 11, 2001 is permanently engraved in this floating sphere. There are the two reflected towers that are an image of the World Trade Center. Most importantly, it's a reflection. As you look into the tower, you not only see your face and the beauty of nature around you, but over your shoulder, you see the devastation of the beams, and you also see the reflection of the ball with the names engraved forever. What the rest of the world saw on TV, we felt in our bodies. The weight, the speed, and the explosive power of that jet fuel that hit the South Tower had a force of 40 tons of TNT. 9-11, I continue to be inspired by those who serve our nation. Yesterday, I went up on the line of the Dixie Fire north of us to thank a new generation of firefighters, guardsmen, and combat soldiers fighting those fires. Some of them hadn't even been born on 9-11. I want to end my remarks today by recognizing and asking for your support for a new group of people who place themselves in harm's way on behalf of Americans. For the past 20 years, our military in Afghanistan relied on local Afghan allies to help us navigate local language, customs, and terrain. The Taliban have been retaliating against those allies by hunting them and assassinating them. For the last five months, I've been working with a committed group of civilians and veterans to help evacuate and resettle these wonderful allies. As Americans, we now have a responsibility to help these Afghans forge new lives in America and become active participants and contributors to our society. 20 years later, we Americans are still united and can be united, just like what Gil said. Today, we look back at 9-11, and I ask you one more time to look at 9-12. Because although 9-11 was devastating, the horror, the evil, the pain, and the anguish, that's not where they are today. And we stopped that the next day when we locked arms. We weren't any religion. We weren't any culture. We were not black, white, red, or yellow. We were red white and blue. And when we stole, stood shoulder to shoulder and held on to each other's hand, nobody was a stranger. Nobody. And we all did what we had to do. And we can still do it today.